So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for being able to have, you know, have a space and, you know, have, be able to bring people on like you, you know, and, and be able to talk. I think that's just really been the biggest thing. It's like, originally I wanted to just do the podcast to just to connect with people. Um, and I, it's, I don't know, I feel like it sounds a little bit selfish in saying that I want to help people. Not that, not that I don't want to help people, but I feel like it's more, it's been more helpful for me in like me navigating all the BS and like all this, I don't know, I feel like this, uh, this low that I've been, this low that I've been in like in the last year and a half, that it's allowed me to just talk to people and get a different perspective, get advice, get tips. And it's allowed me to kind of just kind of refine myself. And, and in that, I feel like a secondary effect has been that it's, if it's helpful for me, it's going to be helpful for somebody else. Facts, bro. It's so valuable for people to like get to hear the stuff that's going to help you. You know what I mean? People, there's so many times where I've held back from saying stuff because I thought that it wasn't going to bring value to anyone. Yeah. And then you come to find out how many people actually value from that. You're like, man, I was in my head. There's like a hundred people that like could have benefited from that. Yeah. Know? And like, that's really been my biggest struggle is the fact that I, I would get caught up with one was not feeling that I, my voice has any value and that, yes, I may be speaking out into the ether and nobody's going to listen, but more often than not, like, there are people that can relate, they respond, they interact, they take something from it, and it's not just, I don't know, it's it's not, it's, there's definitely, people definitely are, are listening, and whether it's passively or whether something resonates with them, I feel like, if it yeah if 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 it can help at least one other person it's helping me if it can help one other person then there's value to be had you know and like otherwise i don't know then that's one of the things like that i've seen like what you've done recently has been real cool is you've been more open to like just sharing your perspective your experiences and and i feel like encouraging to have those conversations like it kind of pushing people to have the want to have those conversations so i'm curious and like i mean i guess with that being said we can kind of get started with the podcast because i feel like it's there's i feel like there's not a whole lot of that and i think may, it might be shifting a little bit more now but like just people being open to connecting with others who are in the same field the similar industry and just kind of I don't know, just helping each other just navigate through this journey that, you know, we all, we're all in. So Christian, thank you for coming on to the Creative Block podcast. It's, you know, it's a pleasure to, to finally meet and to talk. Um, so for those who don't know, give an introduction to who you are, what you do, and we kind of get, get rolling from there. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Um, so I'm Christian. I own a media company, Flores Media. It's pretty simple. Same website, same Instagram, all the same handles. Um, really what, when I say we, me and my wife, uh, we co-own it, we run it together. Basically we specialize in, uh, brand development and branded content in the health and wellness space. Very specifically movement. I think health and wellness can be still very general. Um, you know, if you use that term loosely, you get like the bubbly fizz drinks, kombuchas and all that kind of stuff. I don't do that. Um, I'm very, you know, I have an athletic background. So for me, um, I really wanted to shoot the stuff that I personally do. So I come from the fight background space, um, and just a more aggressive style of training. Um, so that's the stuff that I wanted to shoot. So that's really, we work with those kinds of brands, um, CrossFit, tr like the training that you would see, if you ever think about like HBO 24 seven segments, it's like the training for the athlete leading up to the competition. That's the kind of stuff that like, I like to shoot. Um, so, and really it's content that brands would use for their platforms, right? Social platforms, um, websites, web blasts, um, promos, stuff that's like a minute to a minute 30 long, um, 
I do a lot of storytelling videos, but when I say storytelling, it's still two to three minutes. It's something quick that still kind of is meant to inspire um, and promote a product rather than like a short doc, right? So same concept compressed into like a quarter of the time. Yeah, and it's interesting how, you know, we were talking before we started recording that you, and something I want to talk about is is the how you are very hyper focused in a very specific niche and and even you know how you broke it down it's not even just health and wellness it's it's very specific to a very um, specific audience very specific client type and going into it was that something that you dove in right off the bat um no so a buddy of mine who i consider honestly a mentor um paul weaver on Instagram, Paul Wheatens. Um, I had been following him for a while, and uh, he had this very clean aesthetic about what he was doing. And I, I could tell right off the bat that he was really good with business. Um, I, I think he's got a degree in economics. He's just very talented when it comes to running a business. Um, and so I ended up buying one of his. Pro- I ended up buying his program, his uh, freelance course. And in that, it's more tailored towards. Um, and here's just a shameless plug right here. It's more tailored towards um, how entrepreneurs can run and scale their business, right? It's not about how to shoot. It's not about um, the content creation. That's, you know, that's something that you need to do on your own. This is more so if you're looking to book a client, how to book that client, okay. um, how to logistically run your business, things that happen on the back end that you don't realize, right? Because I think one of the most common things you'll experience is there's so many talented content creators. There's millions of people that know how to shoot a camera right so they just know how to make crazy edits they know how to do a lot of cool stuff but then they fall out of the entrepreneurial space because they can't scale their business they they don't make money um they don't know how to land a client they don't know business etiquette and so this is what that this is what that program really emphasized on and so for me that was one of the biggest things that i took away was niching down even more right i was health and wellness but i didn't know exactly what i wanted to shoot like i was willing to take anything that involved working out um and so i catch myself in 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 gigs that i honestly wasn't passionate about like i'd be shooting it and be like okay this is cool but there was no there was no passion like i i couldn't tell myself that i would do this for free if it came across my lap right so i wanted to be in a position where the work that i do that i take it's something that when i'm on set i'm beyond pumped about it right and i know how to articulate that level of stoke to the client. Um, and I think that's something that really, something that can really get picked up by the client. They can sense that. And so what it does is it drives value when you're pitching a client Mm -hmm. because you know how to push that value in a way and articulate that value in a way that they haven't heard before. Um, so that really got me to trim the fat off the stuff that I was doing, um, and get to a point where I and beyond excited about everything that I that I end up shooting. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of value to that because you know, like you said, not only does it allow you to better articulate what you offer, what the value that you bring to to the client and to the people that you're working with, but also the fact that they're able to vibe off of that and they're able to you know sense that you know what you're talking about. Not only that you know what you're talking about, but you are passionate and you want to be creating and doing the thing for them and it's yeah i mean it's it, like i was telling you before like it's even something that i've realized now with the work that i do that is not uh it's too generic and, and it's too broad right and i feel that um one of the things that i've struggled with has been really not not being able to identify myself as a uh I feel like I even, I don't even really know like, what is it that I do, you know? And, and, and really been, I've been on this journey of figuring that out and seeing the work of people like you, Josh and Ross, who are, you know, very good friends of mine and people that like, I look up to and I see, not only do I, you know, enjoy the work that, that they do, that they create, but I see what they're doing with their businesses and how they've been able to scale and grow and continue to bring on clients and, and do good work that I see that. And it's like, okay, I, I need to like really narrow down who it is that I want to work for. What is the work that I want to do? And what is it that, 
gets me riled up to want to do something. And that's partly why we're here, you know, having this podcast and, and having conversations like this and, and conversations that I've had with, with previous guests has allowed me to kind of just further identify that. And I feel like that is something that it's, it's not really talked about in, and it's 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 interesting because I feel like a lot of creatives they kind of get into this. They pick up a camera, they start you know getting clients, they start doing some work, and it it starts off where you're just doing it for fun, you enjoy doing it, you know you do it for free, you you're very passionate about it. You start getting a few paying gigs here and there, and and a lot of people get kind of caught in that, in this level of like, okay, now you're getting paid for it, and don't really know how to. Yeah, take it from there. Like, how do, how do you grow it from that point, right? And I feel a lot of people get caught up in that where they're, one, end up taking a lot of, I don't want to say, like, low-value clients, but, you know, they're the, I mean, it's, it, it, that's exactly what it is, really, because they're, you know, not, they're taking these low-paying gigs. They're not really doing anything. They're not really providing any value for the people that they're creating the work for. And, yeah, it's, it's really what it is. And, like, they kind of get caught in this in this they get stuck in this level where they just continue doing that and i feel like many you know myself included you kind of get burnt out with the work that you do you get over now you get overwhelmed with doing work that you don't really want to do that you're not super passionate about and that is not good for you not good for the client it's not just bad all around and and you just kind of get caught in this like endless cycle of like just shit work to be honest and it's uh it's something that, like i want to not only for myself but i want that to be put out more into the world and and what does it mean to like niche down you know like what what are some of those things that can help identify you know what it is that you know which you know which path do you want to go with the work that you create it i mean what everything you just said is real close to my heart because i I've walked through this and I feel like what I'm trying to do right now is talk about and put stuff out that I feel most people are thinking, right? Um, and a lot of that just comes with personal experience and time in the game. You run across a lot of common questions that people think there's like some some secret there's like something that that they haven't been told um or that there's like this quick fix to these problems but really for me like i figured this stuff out the hard way through that experience and and really having like inner dialogue listening to the experiences that i was having within that and having like what i would call like a like an inventory right taking a daily inventory and then asking myself if this would if this is what i want to do i uh you know, when you first kind of step into that entrepreneurial game, you think a paycheck is a paycheck and you take whatever comes across your table because it's money, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I can't turn that down because I have to pay my bills. Right. And you get in this perpetual cycle where you're picking everything up and you're never sharpening your craft entirely. You end up becoming decent at a bunch of stuff instead of great at one thing. And a lot of the people that I was looking up to that I would follow religiously when it came to their their, their content, their profiles and stuff, they were great at one thing. You're not going to find a great sports photographer who also has this sick baby photo portrait album, right? Like they get very specific with what they do and then it just it just ends up molding itself. Like mm -hmm. you you become a beacon for everything that is surrounded within that niche in that industry, right? Like and I think too like um, there's something to it when it comes to the algorithms, social platforms, like the time that you spend researching very specific things. Like for me, when I really got specific with what I was doing, all of a sudden it was like all these brands that were falling in that very tight space started coming out of nowhere. The athletes started coming out of nowhere. The people that follow that started coming out of nowhere. And then it became like, I didn't have people that were following lifestyle photographers following me. I didn't have people that were looking for family portraits following me. I didn't have family portrait companies following me. None of that happened. It was, you know, the companies that are selling fitness equipment, the shoe brands, the the fitness apparel, the like it was all within that niche. And it was like, and it was, it was me being willing to say no, right? It, mm -hmm. it took a lot of 
being okay or more so having blind faith in the fact that like, I'll be fine if I say no. That was the hardest first step to take was to be like when, when, a, when a wedding came across my lap, right? Like as an entrepreneur, when you are approached with a three to $5,000 gig, you're like, I'm crazy to say no to that, right? right? Yep. Especially weddings. It's like, it's the big one. And I just started to just remember saying no to all of them. Every time someone would ask me, she's like, no, I have a friend and I'll refer you. Cause I just, I didn't want to get caught in that loop. Like I'd been there and I started saying no to, to baby portraits, to family stuff. I started saying no to everything just, and it was, it was just a weird mental shift because all the no's ended up becoming like opportunities for stuff that I actually wanted to do. I spent all my time and energy really honing in on that. And the opportunities came with time. It was like the one thing where I just remember having that moment where it was like, I feel like I'm doing everything in my power to be good at what I'm doing. And it's just not working out. Right? Like you're mm-hmm. like, I'm not landing clients. I'm not booking gigs. And I remember listening to, uh, Andy Frisella's uh, podcast, the owner of First Form. And he was saying that it's within, it's within that shit storm, that period of time where everything seems to be falling apart, that greatness is built. That's where like people quit. It's that tap out moment, right? You're like, ah, oh, it's not working out. And they turn around and they bail. But you realize that in that shit storm, it's all those personal experiences coming together to get you to the other side of that. And then that's where like you level up to another tier. And it was like, that kept me moving. It was like, just keep riding the wave, keep riding the wave. And now I look back at like when I was in that moment and it feels so distant because it's been, I walked through and it's been such a large gap of time since then. And I'm so stoked and grateful that I was able to like just keep my head down and keep moving forward one foot at a time, you know? Yeah. And when you're navigating that, uh, shit storm, it's, yeah, it's, it's extremely challenging. Right. And like, how do you keep going forward? You know, like, I know you said blind faith, but I mean, I, I guess what was it just simply blind faith? Like, how do you find, how do you tell yourself no? Right. Because I feel a lot of people in that position, right. they, yeah, you got bills to pay. You got, you know, you, you, it's, 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 how do I say this? Like, yeah, you, you get, you get tempted, right? To, you know, you're afraid of like, oh, I'm not going to be able to pay the rent or whatever. And I need to take this, take, take this job. But like, it really is once you get out of that storm, like that, it really is, uh, you know, you reach this breaking point where things just start to, you know, to look up, you know, like for myself, you know, even, even recently has been once I've identified what I want to do and, and kind of like the direction that I've, I've wanted to go, it's allowed me to, I don't know, everything just kind of like started falling to pieces, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've been using a lot, this podcast, for example, I started in 2020, I'm going into technically year two of having this podcast, having a creative block and I spent all of 2021, I didn't put out an episode and I was, I felt like I was kind of like in this big shit storm myself where I was not happy with the work that I was doing, not very fulfilled with any, anything that I was doing. And, and I feel like I was doing a disservice, not only to my clients, but to myself and was really beating myself up a lot. And, and with the encouragement of my close friends and, and just being able to see people around me that I looked up to and, and have kind of been, you know, it's a combination of like mentors like that I talked to directly and kind of were able to give me advice, but also just seeing people like yourself and other people online that I just seeing what everybody's doing and, and the content that they put out and the things that they talk about, it, it kind of really propelled me to like, okay, like I know that I need to just get my shit together and, and it's, I'm going to like, Find, I'm gonna get out of this shit storm, you know, and like it's uh I feel even now going into this year, I've if I've been in this onward onward like forward moving um uh, momentum that is has allowed me to find a lot of fulfillment with the work that I'm doing, not only the being consistent with the podcast, but even some of the other work that I've doing, and it's really allowed me to be much more fulfilled with everything that I do from you know, the sets that I'm involved with, involved with um, the clients that I'm taking on and even the conversations that I'm having, the connections that I'm making have, have all been like, it's, 
been making me better all around. And it's it's very challenging when you're like in that shit storm, you know, using that again, like it's it's very challenging for to get out of that. And like I, I feel like a lot of people, like you said, they they give up. You know, they they stop, they move on to something else, they decide that it, you know, wasn't cut out for them and like I don't know. It's I, I, I think there's a lot to be said to the, the fact that like if you really want something, like you have to you have to like work at it and, and you really have to just I don't know, it's I don't wanna say like you wanna keep like throwing shit at the wall until like something sticks. You know, like it's a, a terrible analogy, but like, you know, kinda like what what you just said though, that is you have to <laughs> literally like i don't know I, i'm trying to I'm trying to find a way to articulate that you have to have that blind faith you I know would, like how how can you how can you have faith that that everything's going to come out okay eventually and it, it's everything's not going the way that you wanted to go right now but if you give it enough time and you continue to do take those incremental steps into getting better to finding this you know way out that things are going to start looking up I think to simplify it, you there has to be a why. Like the why was the component that kept me moving forward no matter what. Like I remember being, to rewind, I remember being in that space where I was working a nine to five. Now, if a nine to five is for people, cool. Like I'm not knocking people that work mm -hmm. nine to fives, but I'll tell you, it was never for me. I'm the kid that has worked in every type of job from food to retail to construction, any sort of labor. I've done it all. Like you name it, I've been there. I've worked every nine to five you can think of and I've always quit. I've always quit. I always ended up leaving the job because it did nothing for me. I did not feel fulfilled. I didn't want to be there. I always looked forward to that 5 p.m. to get home and like live. I remember one of the most profound things I heard is like your day's broken up into three quarters and you have a quarter of it that you sleep eight mm -hmm. hours, a quarter of it that you work. And so you only get a quarter of your day to do what you actually want to do, which is live. And I, I hated that concept because of how true it was. And so I just remember getting to that point where I quit. I was working a job and I remember quitting on the spot. I was living in Santa Monica. Um, and I remember I, I quit on the spot. I called at my time, at the time she was my girlfriend, married now. She, I called her and I was like, hey, I just quit. Um, and she's like, what do you mean? I was like, I, I just quit my job. I'm coming home. She's like, what are you going to do? Like, I, I like we have to pay, you know, at the time we were paying like almost two grand for this little shack studio in Santa Monica. Um, I was like, I have no idea. Um, and I was, uh, I already owned a camera and I was shooting for fun, like to kind of build a social presence and stuff. And I was like, maybe I can try to like book some photo shoots. Um, and I remember putting it on my Instagram story, like, Hey, I'm taking like a hundred dollar shoots. And I mind you, I was like really bad at this time, right? Like, like just, I wasn't good at the craft yet. And I got some bites, right? Because people were like, a hundred bucks, cool. Like, yeah, of I'll course. Free yeah. You know, basically free content. Um, and I booked enough of those that month within the last two weeks to pay my to pay my bills. And that sparked the light bulb moment. That was like, wow, if I keep doing this and get good, this could be something. And I remember hating working a nine to five so much. And on top of that, priorities, right? Like I now, I got two kids. My son's about to be four. My daughter's two. Um, we were expecting our first at the time. It was like, I wanted to be able to provide. I was tired of being broke. Um, I was tired of just like paycheck to paycheck. And and that's like, that's even like speaking high, like paycheck to paycheck was like a good thing, right? The, like, yeah. I was drowning. Um, I couldn't afford anything. Like I was always borrowing money from the parents. Like it was just, it was so bad and I was so tired of it. Um, and so that, that was like a big concoction of, of motivation to never go back to that because with nine to fives, unless you get like a bonus or a rate or like a promotion, you're capped out financially. Like, you know what you're always going to make, which is why I think so many people do it. Cause it's reliable. Mm -hmm. They know that they're getting paid or they know the amount. It's consistent. It's consistent. Right. But my dreams didn't allow for that. Like what I wanted for myself, I, I, I couldn't get capped out. I needed more. I needed to be able to scale it myself and like make as much as I needed to make, not just to like have a bunch of money, but like I wanted to build things. I wanted to leave a legacy for my kids. I wanted to like own a home, right? Some 
crazy idea if you growing up in California to like own property, you know? So it was just like a lot of things that I wanted to do and I knew working nine to five wasn't going to do it. So my, the why is what kept me going. Like every time that I wanted to quit, I would think about like, well, what's my alternative? If I quit, I got to go pick up a job that I hate. Mm. So either way, whichever direction you go, you're going to have a stressor. You're going to be stressed. It's more, it's going to come down to what kind of stress do you want? Do you want the stress of really just hating your life because you're somewhere you don't want to be? Or do you want to stress on scaling something that you love and having faith that it's going to play out if you keep moving forward? There's no like nothing to look forward to when you're working a job you don't like. Right. Like what, what's the end game there? Like how, I mean, they make movies out of this stuff, bro. Like you, you see the guy who's at the dead end job and he's been doing it his whole life. And he gets to that point where he's like, I need to make a change, right? Like how many times are we going to see that until you realize like, Hey, that's your life, buddy. Like there's at some point you got to hit that wall and like turn the corner, right? You're in charge of your own destiny. You need to make a shift in order for something to change or else it's going to be the same thing time and time again. And I noticed that like the whole time I was working nine to fives, it never changed no matter what industry I was in. It was the same thing. I was getting robbed in taxes. I was working jobs. I didn't want to be working in. I was just there for no reason, basically. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it, understanding why and having a reason to, yeah, to want to get out of that, you know, that rut, that shit storm and, and really, yeah, it, it's, that's really what it takes. It's like having that break you, when you have that breaking point of like, yeah, I, I don't want to continue living like this. It's uh, there's, there's a lot to unpack from that. And, and a lot of people I feel get to that point and they just give up because, you know, they, I don't know. I, I don't want to say that they just didn't want it bad enough. Cause I feel like for me, if you, I don't know, I've always been like, if there was something that I wanted bad enough, like I just did, I figured it out whether it was, you know, taking, you know, knowing that I, I had to do these shit jobs or I want to, I need to take these, these other, other opportunities because it's going to help me get to this point And, and, and really, I don't know, I feel like, yeah, like you said, like there's, once you, once you understand, once you kind of reach that point where you're like, you're unhappy with the situation that you're in, like, you're going to do whatever it takes to just get out of it and make a change, you know? And like, it's, it's crazy. Cause like that not only applies to like business and, and just being fulfilled with like the work that you do, but you know, even with like fitness, dude, like for me, man, like I've kind of let myself go over the years and like literally in the midst of like this awakening and like this, this kind of shift that I was having with my work, like even like health took like, a, I, I've had a different perspective with that. And like, I feel like once I kind of like just changed the way I thought about the work that I was doing, uh, taking more of a priority with my health and like just getting active and like doing things. It's, I don't know. It was, it was like this, all this stuff that was happening at the same time that just kind of, I think it's, it was for me a big turning point to where it just literally just something that clicked where like, okay, I want to, I'm not happy with the situation that I'm at and I need to do something about it. And it's uh, I feel like that is something that can apply. It's just, you apply that to life in general because it's not, you know, like, sure, this is a creative, you know, podcast or whatever. And, you know, a lot of people that, that listen are, are fellow creatives, but I feel that it's, it's something that's like, it, it extends far beyond just the creative work that you do, you know, whether it be with like relationships or, you know, the people that you surround yourself with, like it's, if, if you want something bad enough, like you'll figure out a way to, to make it happen. You know, it's, it's interesting that, you know, you, you mentioned like living out in California, that you're living here in Ohio. A lot of people that, you know, that are in this creative world, creative industry, like they kind of get their start here. They get some traction and a lot of people end up moving into like bigger markets, whether it be New York, Chicago or going out to California. It's interesting how, you know, you're sitting here in central Ohio. So how, how did that come about? So... I, th I think I'm in a uh, very fortunate position to have been there first and then came out this way instead of the other way around because I've experienced what I like to call a pipe dream. Like California gets portrayed as this state of opportunity. And, uh, and it's because it's like the heart of media, right? Like it's, you got Silicon Valley, you got LA. 
But statistically speaking, to make it in an industry, you're looking at less than 1% of people that actually make it in there and are successful. When I say successful, that doesn't mean living paycheck to paycheck. That means you're like comfortable, mm-hmm. right? And it's one of those things where you, you, I feel like you've even fed this lie that you have to be thrown in the middle of everything in order to achieve what it is that you're tr- like striving for. But I mean, just take a look at businesses that, you know, have planted themselves in places like Texas, have planted themselves in places like Columbus. People underestimate the size of the media industry in Columbus. Like it's so many companies are based out of here. Um, And for me, I realized like the way that I, the way that I operate in regards to my business, it's, it's not, I don't need, I don't need to be in front of the brands in order for me to be successful, put it that way. Mm -hmm. Most of my clients or 99% 99% of my clients are outside of Ohio. So it was like, I could, I realized I could do it from anywhere. It's not going to be, you know, in California. I could do it from at this point, Alaska. Like it's because of the content that it's, it's about, it's about how you can, at least in, in my position, the style of shooting that I do as long as I'm and Alaska was a bad example because it's ice everywhere. But <laughs> as long as I can create that vision in whatever atmosphere is presented, the job gets done. Right. Right. Um, like I said, I have clients that are in the UK. I have clients that are, you know, all over the place, not based in, you know, the central part of the United States. Um, and I'm and I'm doing fine. Um, I it's a it's a big, it's a big ocean. And everyone is like a little fish in California. You're competing with a lot of people, um, which makes it a lot harder. And it significantly reduces the opportunity scale because it's like, it's so saturated to the point where you're just like, you're just, you're begging at that point. You're begging for an opportunity. And then the thing that I also came across that I constantly try to warn people about is like, in order to get to that position, you kind of have to like compromise in a lot of aspects, right? I talked about this recently on my on, on Instagram. Like I, the compromising of like morality, the compromising of things that you always said you wouldn't do, um, the compromising of things that you don't want to do just to kind of get a leg up, right? Mm-hmm. That was something that I wasn't okay with. Like I just, I realized, I lived it. I, I remember being in that space surrounded by superficial everything, Um and what happens was I, I wasn't I wasn't fulfilled. Like my friends weren't quote unquote friends. They were business acquaintances, right? If we weren't creating, we had nothing to do with each other. Um, that was like kind of what that was like the only thing people wanted to do was like create and build their brand, right? They they wanted to go viral. They wanted to get a following. They want, and it was like it was more for it's more for me than just that. Any client I have right now will tell you like I build relationships with them. If, if we were in the same state, I'd be eating at their dinner table with their family. I text them regularly. I'm on phone calls with them. I'm checking in. I'm engaging on their social platforms. Like I'm I'm involved in their lives. It's not just like, hey, pay me. Here's the work. Bye. It's not just transactional. Right. Because I've been there and it wasn't fulfilling. Like I want to be able to develop relationships. So when I end up, you know, being in person with them, like it's a, it's a bond, right? It's a, it's a, it's a relationship that I'm able to cultivate, um, and, you know, I, I, I feel comfortable around them. That's something that matters to me a lot more than just having a client. Like, and, it, and if it feels too superficial, if it's literally just a transaction, they don't, they're not sustainable. Eventually that, that, that business relationship fades and then they're not a client of mine anymore. It just, it's always worked out the way the ones that are, the ones that are long-term for me, um, they're long-term because we have a relationship. I can call them right now and be like, Hey buddy, how'd your day go? You know? Um, like I saw this on your you know story the other day, like, tell me about it. Like I can have these conversations with them. Um, and it's not weird, right? It's not, I'm not just seen as like the guy who makes content for them or, and they're not just seen as the person that, you know, pays my bills. Um, that was like, those are the valuable takeaways for me that you can't really teach. You just have to walk it. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's one of those things where like, no one could have taught me that you hear it all the time. Like it you know, saturated industries, blah, blah, blah. You don't understand what that means until you're in it. And then you realize like, man, that was like, that tore me down a bit, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And like kind of something that like really stood out with with what you just said was that the fostering of relationships that, that goes so far with, um, not only, um, 
not only with developing like those those relationships, you know, like on the business side, but just you know, being known for you know somebody who's just not just transactional. Who's he's not, he, you're not just somebody that they're gonna hire, and and you know you're just never gonna hear from them again because you know you gave them whatever deliverables and that was it. You know, and it kind of goes back to what we you know you were talking about earlier, where you know being able to be very specific and hyper focused in in this in, in the work that you do um allows gives you even more ability to con- further foster those relationships and and really you know build that trust of not only working but just connecting with people at a different and you know at a, on a different scale than you know that relationship that you build with you know with these clients and these people that you know they it's not just uh, that that allows you to further stand out from, you know, the competition, you know, and any anybody else in the space, right? And you know, something to, you know, that's that's been another theme with like the more recent episodes has has been, you know, around like the importance of fostering those relationships, whether it is with you know fellow creatives, the people that you interact with on a daily, re- you know, on your day to day, but even you know with clients and and really. I feel like that's another thing that a lot of people, you know, once they kind of reach that level where they kind of get stuck in, in their, you know, their, yeah, you get caught up with just doing all the, all the different things that you think are going to help you, you know, get this bigger client, get paid more and, and really kind of lose sight of, you know, building relationships and, and, and taking it more than just something that's transactional, you know, a good friend of mine, uh, Josh Emmerich, who, you know, I see as a, as a mentor, good friend of mine, somebody who I share this space with and I work with a lot, like literally everything that he does with work is all centered around, um, creating good experiences for the people on set, for the clients, for the people that he works with. And it's, most of the time it's not even really about the creative and like, you know, I've even sat in some of these conversations where he's meeting with a new client and it's, you know, they'll talk for, for a while for even meet certain numerous times before even really getting down into like what the creative is going to be for something. And it's, it's really centered around like understanding who, who they are, what they're, you know, what their pain points are, what are they trying to do with their business? Why is it that they're in this space that they're doing? And and that allows him to not only understand his client, but be, be able to establish this connection with them. And and now he's invested in why they in their why and why they want to do it. And that allows him to create this this great experience that when it's all said and done, like it wasn't just a video. It's like something that's was very true and dear to the client and it allowed them to you know, it, it was something that they needed and that they wanted and like, and it allows them to just, yeah, establish this like big relationship. And for me, that's re- been one of the things that, that I've experienced myself working with him, that seeing the, him putting so much attention to, to that aspect of like the whole, you know, like production that it's, it makes it good for everybody around because even like, when he's communicating with his crew, he's able to convey why it is that we're doing this thing for this client. Why is it important? And like, even when we're, you know, when we're like breaking down, like the creative, like the technical aspect of like this production or whatever, you know, he's able to articulate that to the crew and, and kind of pass it down. And now we are vested in the thing that we're doing as well. And that allows to, you know, provide even better experience for, you know, the client on set. And, you know, it's, it's like even the shoot that we had recently, you know, we were talking to some like uh, senior, senior level executive in some, um, some company and they were like very particular with like being interviewed and they wanted to sound a certain way. And even kind of going into that, we already knew that, Hey, you know, he might, he might be, you know, we've talked to him already and we kind of, he might be, uh, you know, he might, he might, not be happy with how he's saying, or it might be a little bit more challenging to, to get, you know, he'll, he'll need a little bit more time to, to be able to articulate what he wants to say and in the way that he feels comfortable. And even us like knowing that allowed us to kind of like we were, when it came down to like interviewing him, it kind of prepared us to, for that. And it, you know, it, 
he was able to like once once he were able to be done with it, he was able to like, hey, you know, like, oh, thank you for, you know, giving me the time and like understanding that, you know, like I know I know it's like very unique and you know you guys have just been killing it. Everybody's just been kind of coming and going and and it's it's been a totally different process. But I don't know. I feel like even just like little things like that, like you don't know, you're not able to articulate that or understand that without establishing or caring that you know with this client that you're working with and like that's something that like I've taken away and like I respect so much when I see people. Who, who do that and then care about that it is it's more than just creating a video or you know having some it's, it's more than just some deliverable that you're giving a client and and it, it really you know those are like the like little things that like i feel like help you stand out with you know in this saturated market industry or whatever it is and like not in much emphasis is paid on that and like i feel like the people who who do pay you know pay attention to that and put a lot of emphasis on that are the ones that are succeeding there's a, um, which kind of like transitions into that like next part of the business model, which is the business etiquette, right? When we talk about fostering relationships and growing and expanding on that. Um, I know tons of creatives that are, again, really good at what they do. Um, but, and this is something I experienced personally, is I couldn't retain clients. I would have one, but I couldn't retain them. And I came to realize that it was the business etiquette. There's so many people I know today that they might not be the best behind the camera. They might not be like the greatest shooter or the greatest editor or fancy, but they retain clients. And that was something that had stood out to me. I'm like, how, like, you know, a young me was like, I'm so much better than them. How are they doing better than me? Like what's, what, what are they doing differently? And I realized like they knew business etiquette. They knew how to retain a client. They would, they would check up on them, right? They would engage. They were presentable. Um, they had a relationship that, that was more impressionable. And the, what I realized was like, it's not just about shooting your camera. It's about how you engage in those moments, whether it's with the talent or the client, right? From, from a smaller scale level, if you've ever done running gun shooting and you're shooting with a talent, we'll use a woman, for example, because it's the most, um, it makes the most sense. Like I would hear after a shoot with like an athlete, they'd be like, Hey, like that was really fun. Like I was nervous going into it and like that I had a really good time. Thank you for being like so comfortable. Thank you for making me feel comfortable. And then they'll go on to say, yeah, like the last person I did a shoot with, like, it was like, it was cool. We got the content, but like he was quiet the whole time. He didn't really speak much. He just kind of shot, didn't give much direction, blah, blah. And you realize how far that goes, right? Like, because that impression, they're not going to recommend you. They might be like, Hey, like, the video will turn out cool, but he was kind of weird or he was kind of shy. He was kind of quiet. And these things like they make impressions because then that talent is going to go on and tell the client their experience. That mm -hmm. stuff passes around. And so if you're not impressionable, if you don't know how to have, if you can't make someone feel comfortable by getting them out of their bubble, that's going to be an issue. And from a content perspective, that's going to show in mm -hmm. the final production, right. right? And if someone's awkwardly, you know, speaking or acting or they don't have much direction it, you can see it you can tell that they didn't have much direction it doesn't feel authentic it doesn't feel organic and so that business etiquette for me it, it mattered i would have you know very early in the business where like content wise i was delivering but i couldn't retain the client and it was like man like i didn't i didn't do a good job of reassuring insecurities in the client right because we all have them whether you're the talent whether you're the person shooting or you're right. the business owner the, the business owners have insecurities too They'll come across every every two weeks, you know, be like, ah, is this really, am I really spending, am I spending my, my money wisely, right? Is this worth the investment? You got to reassure those insecurities. There's so many things about the business side of the business side of that model that people don't take into account. Once you shoot, well, you've done only a quarter of the work. All right. There's so much more to go. And that's the, that's the experience part of it, right? And, the, and fostering relationships. When you, when you develop that relationship with the client, that doesn't just mean that you know how to say hi and bye or like when you talk, it's cool. There's more to that. There's a, if you think about personal relationships with friends or loved ones or relationships, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just a different approach with the same concept. There's a whole formula for it. Kind of going into like what, what you, you know, you talked about, you know, growing a business. And I feel like this is something that – you know, I feel like, I, I feel like this conversation is kind of, is, is, is very pointed towards, you know, the, those creatives are kind of stuck at that level, right? Who, you know, are, are, are trying to, trying to skill, you know, and get, you know, more traction on their business and, and retain those clients and, and do those things. 
how do you feel about, you know, like mentors and, I don't know, like even just surrounding yourself with people that are are doing the things that you want to do or have, I feel like, are the kind of, I don't know, like these, the, the way I see it for me is, uh, I mean, I guess it, it let me give you my perspective and it'll probably help articulate my point a little bit more. But I, I feel like for me, what, you know, something else that has been very transformative has been surrounding myself with people who are looking to foster those relationships, whether it be with fellow creatives or like with the clients that they work with, but are looking to, you know, improve in every aspect, not only the business, but like being creative and, and, and not only improving themselves, but, like there's only so much that you can do alone and like, yeah, you can, you know, you can learn, you know, you can watch videos and, and, and do things like that to, to get better and, and to improve. But I feel like there's a lot of value to be had from, you know, having mentors or having people to look up to that are doing the things that you want to do or like in a, in a different stage that's like, you know, you're, you're trying to get there. And like, you know, I know you mentioned like you took a course and like that would, that helped you out to kind of, you know, navigate some of these some of these things and be able to you know be able to grow how do you you know how do you feel like that you know do you think that is something that's necessary for somebody to grow or to you know scale a business or to get better as a creative i wouldn't say buying a program per se is necessary um <clears throat> what i would say is having clarity clarity in your weak points knowing where you actually need help yeah. um and being humble enough to ask for that help Right. One of the, for me, like, one of the things that I have really, one of the things that really bothers me, put it that way, is a creative's inability or lack of desire to help someone else. Right. Um, there's, and it's, it's honestly, there's, there, it's, there's two things. It's either a scarcity mindset from the person that knows what they're doing that they feel they can't give away their secrets because, this is, this is my secret and like, I'm not going to help you be successful or I don't want you to steal my clients. It's a scarcity. You don't think there's enough to go around. Right. Or like, you're just kind of a dick. Those are, I've experienced both. And it's as just, just to keep it blunt. Like I've experienced that other side where like, whether it's a scarcity thing or not, like they're doing well, but they're just, they're kind of a dick. They just don't want to help. They don't think it's worth their time. They're busy, blah, blah, blah. Man, if you saw how many DMs I get, from people, once I actually take the time to engage and respond in the random stuff that I get sent through messages, the response back is the most fulfilling thing in the world. Like, hey, thank you for taking the time to respond. Like, I'm, I'm shy or I don't know how to network or I'm new to the business. How do like, I, you answering these questions has helped me so much. That stuff goes so far. Why? Because it goes back to fostering relationships. Yep. You never know who you just helped. And on top of that, man, like. How many of us wished we had that when we were coming up? Oh, For yeah. me, I think about it all the time. I'm like, man, if that guy would have just given me five seconds of his time, just to give me a, a little bit of help, these questions that like took me years to answer that someone could have answered in five seconds to, would have taken no time from them and they could have changed my whole life. But they didn't take the time to do it because it wasn't worth their time. They didn't see, they didn't see a payout. They didn't see that it was going to benefit them in their business. And that kind of stuff, like I just, it eats me up inside, man. Yeah, it's it's horrible. Like I've I've experienced that myself, you know, like very early on where, you know, you reach out to people that you look up to or, you know, do something cool or, you know, or have, you know, they shot at a location or did something cool and like it's you know, those those in, it it really goes a long way when whenever the you know, you get that response or you know, somebody shares their perspective or even just gives you, you know, gives you, you know, a bit of random advice like it may not mean much to you when you know like answering this question or it may be something that's just like oh yeah this is very simple but like they can mean a lot to that person and like that's one of the reasons why you know i i really enjoy this podcast is because not only does it help me with you know just learning more and just expanding like my creative network but i feel like a lot of these conversations that i have can help somebody at any point in their journey because i feel like a lot of these things we've experienced or or are currently experiencing and like i think that being able to articulate that and have a voice and have something have a platform to be able to share that it's 
very meaningful and it, and I hope that it could bring some kind of value to whoever you know it comes across because it's yeah like I, I've never understood how people are not yeah they don't want to share or they don't you know they feel like me sharing this bit of information is going to stop them from paying their bills or getting the next client or whatever and it's, it's, it's weird because a lot of people that I've connected with even you know that are like early on in their career like at some point either establishing that connection either you know it's somebody that hey now I know this guy does this thing maybe I can reach out to him they can help me out or I've even had people that I've connected with who are early on in the career they've reached out to me and like offered me work or give have a you know presented me with some kind of opportunity to where like I can help them with something that they were doing or you know it, it's I don't know it's I want people to to understand that it's okay to like reach out to people and not be intimidated by, you know, maybe some negative interaction that they had with somebody they reached out to previously or feel that there's nothing to be gained from like connecting to other people in the space. Cause I feel like a lot of people too, like in that, I feel like even like in that, in that same level, they kind of get caught up with competing with everybody else. And like, I, I don't know, like I, I never, I've never understood that. Like there's so much opportunity for people to like, make money be able to grow and be able to scale your business and do everything that you want to do They're like there's so much to like go around that like i I never understood why people get caught up in well there's a there's a that. difference between like opening a door for someone and holding their hand as they walk through it right like for people like that that struggle with it it's like all you're doing with these basic answers to these questions you're opening a door for them no one's telling you to baby them through the whole process Right. Like if someone's like, Hey, um, what's your favorite sound pack? Right. I can point you to the website where the sound pack is buy it, use it. Cool. Am I going to be like, I use this sound for this time. And I, that's the difference between opening the door and holding their hand yeah. through it. You're giving someone an opportunity to grow. But when you keep that door closed for someone, like it's, it, it doesn't do anyone any good. Like, it's like, Oh, this is mine. Like it's, it's this controlling almost governing aspect that you have over things. So, so many people, everyone at some point of a level of success has had a door opened for them. No one, anyone that says I'm like self-made, it's complete nonsense, complete nonsense. At some point, someone held a door open for you. There's no way around that. Any, from the millionaire, billionaire to the people, you know, middle class, whatever it is, like everyone has had someone open some door for them. And to think that you're too good to do that for someone else, even though someone did that for you, is just mind boggling to me. Like, I just, I don't understand how people get to that place of selfishness where it's like, they think that that person isn't worth, could you imagine if someone t did that to you, right. right? Like, what if someone's like, you're not worth my time, right? They didn't do that. They opened a door for you. And it's one of those things where you just got to pay it forward, right? It's nothing crazy. Things that take 10 seconds of your time can be dramatically life-changing for someone's business. Again, that doesn't mean that you're mentoring them through the whole process or you're like giving away all your secrets to the program that you're selling. Like there's, you'll see anyone that has a program has little bits of, of golden nuggets that they give away that like could change someone's life. They're not telling you the whole process, right? Right. We all have businesses to run. We don't necessarily have the time for all that, but there's little components of help that can be given that takes no time from you and it could mean the world to someone else. Yeah. 100%. And like, it kind of goes back to what, the point that I was trying to make is like, they're surrounding yourself with people that can help you grow and, and not being afraid to reach out or to seek those opportunities. There's so much, I feel like that's, that's another thing that could be, that's a big catalyst for, for growth is, is really, you know, opening your, opening yourself to opportunities to, that are beyond, you know, this like little bubble that you're in. Cause I feel like a lot of people get caught up with like, okay, I'm, I, I don't feel confident enough to ask this creative or this other person for help or, you know, even like, yeah, just like little things like that where, oh, you know, like, oh, that sound, you know, what, where do you get those, your sound pack or your LUTs or what, you know, whatever it is. Like, I feel like I, I have found myself there before where like I was, I felt that uh, I was afraid to ask 
or ask for help. And like, there's, there's nothing to, I don't, I don't think there is, is anything negative to ask for help or to, I know that you need help or that you're stuck with something. I feel like once I kind of like things changed for me, once I kind of like broke out of that bubble, broke out of that shell and was able to expand my creative network and the people that I surrounded myself with. And like, really, once I really understood that, like, Oh, Hey, these, you know, these are people that have either had ex similar experiences or have some kind of, uh, are able to kind of point me in a direction of like, Hey, well, maybe if you did this or had this approach or, you know, or read this book or listen to this podcast or whatever. And like, I don't know, I feel like for me, once I kind of like opened my, my, my mind to like those possibilities, I, I was able to, I've been able to experience the most growth and like, it's even allowed me to establish like new relationships with people who are, you know, maybe doing things that are like, you know, they're, they're further along than I am. And, and it's allowed me to kind of follow in their steps in a way and, and be able to take like little things from different people. And like, I don't know, I feel like there's, there's so much to be gained from, um, having a creative network of people that you can look up to that you can reach out to and like you can even like bounce ideas and just collaborate with you know like even me being here right here in this space is from a relationship that stemmed out like online and it's it's crazy kind of going back to what you know we're talking about like fostering relationships that you know some of my closest friends now are people that like i started interacting with online whether it be you know asking about, you know, some lighting thing that I liked or, you know, a piece of content that I enjoyed. And, you know, from asking like those little questions turned into, you know, working with them, interacting more, you know, becoming friends. Now, you know, we, you know, spend holidays together, do things like that. And like, even, you know, for me, even being in this space here, it's all from something that stemmed from just opening myself to, you know, not being afraid to like ask for help or to just interact with people online. Like, I don't know, I, I think a lot of people kind of get caught in that trap of like, they're, they feel like they're too good or too afraid to like ask for help or to like reach out to somebody that, I don't know, like, I feel like a lot of people miss out on opportunities like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, even speaking to the person that might be insecure to even reach out, like, I'll tell you, if you don't, you could miss a serious opportunity, right? Like, like good example is like one of the most common questions I get is, you know, hey, I'm looking to break into the fitness space. Like, how do I do that? Like, what did you do to land clients in the fitness space? Like, I'll tell you 100% of the time. It's my personal experience. It might be different than what someone else did, but like, this is what I literally do. And it's, it's not like, to me, it's not a crazy answer. Like I tell people, like, I'm a cold call kind of guy. Like, I don't have, I, for example, I my, um, my buddy Lobo, Instagram Lobo Films, he has a lot of people, a lot of brands that will reach out to him, right? They come to him. That's not my that's not my testimony. Like I don't have like all these brands that reach out to me. I'm a hustler. So I'm a cold call kind of guy. Like I'll slide into those DMs, right? I'll I'll engage, like I'll go through back doors. I'll talk to athletes, like I'll talk to athletes, I'll talk to whoever I gotta talk to to get in. I put in that footwork and I tell people that and they're like, oh, really? Like do brands respond to that? You'll hear another side of things where it's like, oh, don't go into DMs. Brands won't take the time to do it. Um, go through emails. Well, my personal experience, I got I got ignored 100% of the time when I emailed companies. It didn't work for me. Some people, it works great. I don't know why. They're blessed with emails. It doesn't work for me. 99% of my clients, cold calls, DMs. Weird. I don't know what to tell you, but that was my experience, right? So I can give this advice to someone. Is it going to work for you? I don't know but this is what I currently do. It, it, it doesn't take anything from me to tell you that. Mm. And that advice could be that turning point in someone's business where like, Hey, like I started sliding into someone's DM and I got a client. Like I just put in the work and this is what I did. It's not, it's not crazy. It's not special, but for the people that don't take that leap of faith to ask that question, something that was so simple for me to tell you could be that pivotal moment for you and your business. Um, and it's that, and again, a lot of people have that like intimidation factor because they have these experiences of people not taking the time to help someone, right? Like they, they'll reach out to someone, they don't get a response. Um, you know, especially with, with direct messages, like you can see when someone read it, you know what I mean? So they, they get these like experiences where like, Oh, like I'm some guy with only a thousand followers and like not a big portfolio. So why would this guy who's like working with Nike take the time to like even speak to me? You know, we put these people on pedestals, not realizing that like, that's literally just a guy holding a camera, Right. like bring them down and 
ask those questions because at the end of the day, it's, it's your why moment. You got bills to pay. You have a family to provide for. You have goals in life. And if you don't ask those questions, you're holding yourself back. Yeah. And you know what's, what's funny too is like more often than not, those people that you think are like here on this pedestal or whatever, they're more than willing to share or pay it forward and just be able to give their point of view or give that advice because it's, uh, you know, and it's not, it's not as scary as, as a lot of people make it out to be because, you know, I've experienced that too, where, you know, you reach out to these people that you wouldn't think otherwise would respond and they give you this bit of information. And, you know, what you alluded to earlier was like, it, turns into this thing that is the turning point for you and your business or this, at this point where you were that it just changes entirely your whole game, you know, and it helps you move forward and grow. So like I, yeah, man, don't be afraid to reach out to slide into the DMS and just ask questions. And like, I don't know. And it's like, I don't know. It's for me, like, I think it is, is focus on building relationships and just like having genuine interactions with people, um, it you'd be surprised it goes a long way like i mean even for me like i i did a did a job recently where somebody that I interacted with in dms like over 2 years ago random interaction didn't really think much of it and literally 2 years later hey you're in ohio right and it was you know it turned into an opportunity like hey i i remember that we had this conversation. You told me you're from Ohio. We have this job here in this place. How far are you from that? It's relatively, I think it's relatively close to where you are. And like, I don't know, for me, it was just like some random interaction that I didn't really think much of anything, but it was like a director that like I had seen a, a documentary. I was like, Hey, I just watched this documentary, blah, blah, blah. It was really cool. Like I'm in this space and like, I, you know, checked out some of your work and I enjoyed it. Literally that's, that was the extent of the conversation. And literally two years later, like, Hey, you know, there's this thing that we're doing here in Ohio and, um, you know, I thought of you because you had told me that you were from Ohio and like I checked some of your work and I think you'd be a good fit for this. And then we kind of had this conversation like, I, I mean, it's literally 100 percent what, what you were just saying, like it is you'd be surprised that like even like little interactions like that, there's, you know, it's, you know, it there's there's so much to be there's so much potential to be gained from that. And like and, and yeah, don't be afraid to, to just interact and have these positive interactions because like I, I feel like even with social media. A lot of people tend to think, sure, there's a lot of negative aspects to it, but there's, I don't know, I feel like it's, it's very influential. It's like, depending on how you use it, like it could, you know, help you in so many ways, you know, not only growing businesses, but just like growing, uh, developing as a, as a business owner and as a creative and just a person in general, man, like there's so much out there to, you know, to, to have like, mm, there, there's so there's so much out there to 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 gain and like I, I think the point that I'm that I want to make is that like don't be afraid to ask or to like just talk to people and to like to to connect and and grow your network because it's you know like I don't know I feel like a lot of people talk about oh you know my network networking this and that but like that's literally what it is it's just networking and you never know what could happen I man I can't even like there even if someone who you reach out to doesn't have the answer you're looking for there's always like a, there's always like another door that opens from that, right? So an example is like, I'll reach out to a friend who I'll ask about when it comes to production. Be like, hey, I don't really know much about this, but like there's this channel I follow and I get all my answers from this. And this has helped me so much in business going down those rabbit holes. Perfect example is uh, Danny Gewertz. I don't know if you follow him, but oh, yeah. he's got one of the best, if not the best YouTube channel when it comes to production on the planet. The guy has every video is like stuff that you're like, wow, he gave that away for free. Like you, it blows my mind that all the information in every episode and every ch like video that he puts out, it's like having a mentor right at the tip of your fingers. Like everything that he says from like the filters he uses, the cameras and why to like how he lights his scenes to yeah, like, very, like, he gets like very technical yeah, with stuff. Yeah. Real technical about stuff to the point where like, man, this is gold. Like it gives me chills this thing too. Cause I'm like, man, he's changed my whole, I've never talked to the guy. I would love to connect with him some point, but he like has changed my life when it comes to, to, you know, business. Cause it's just the things that like, he talks about openly, right? Like another one is Cooper films. I remember talking to my buddy, Jason Anthony, um, 
he was like, he's seeing what I was shooting. He's like, yeah, you got to check out Cooper films and stuff. He's got, he's got that like under armor vibe. And so I go to his page and like, again, he's like breaking down the way that he lights these fitness shoots and like why, and like his vision behind it and how he gets the inspiration for these productions and stuff. And like, it took me from like, a guy who just shoots really cool action stuff to like having a purpose behind it. Right. It gave it that like influence, that inspiration to taking something that's just a video and it took it to capturing emotion, storytelling, taking, taking people along for the ride. Right. And that came from asking questions. It wasn't like the pers first person I asked had those answers, but they were like, Hey, I can refer you to these channels, to these sources, to these websites. And then I did the work. Right. But at some point or another, you need to be able to take that first step because you never know how that flower is going to unfold. Right. It's, it's, it's just it's it's super cool. Yeah. It's cool hearing that. Like, I mean, Morgan Cooper is somebody who who I look up to a lot and like I, I really love a lot of the work that they do. So it's, it's cool just even kind of seeing like it, it's weird. I, I I don't even remember how really how I came across like your your work. But I don't know. I, I think you, you talked about it, too. Like these algorithms have a way of like connecting people that it just boggles my mind because I feel like it, I, I feel like a lot of like our inspirations on like even a lot of the, the things that we do and and even just I, I even feel like even a lot of the philosophies they they really align so like it's again kind of going to what I was saying like the social media like if you use it the right way like I feel like you you know you kind of manifest and like kind of end up surrounding yourself around the things that are going to help you grow and and be better overall. Um, so as, as we start to wrap up, like I, I think it's it is I'm I'm very grateful that we had this conversation because I feel like it's out of some of the more recent episodes. I, I think this is I don't know it's very jam packed with a lot of like very specific and like advice and like I don't know it's it's I think it's it's a little bit different from from other episodes that I've had where you know it's it's all been very generic. But I feel like a lot of these things are like things that not only speak to me, but I feel like speak to, can speak to a lot of people that are kind of struggling to get out of this, like, you know, this, this, this space that they're in and they're kind of like wanting to grow and kind of, you know, spread their wings, you know, for, for lack of a better term. So as, as we start to wrap up, you, you know, you, you mentioned storytelling and like some of the stuff that you've been sharing recently is, it's all very like, uh, directed to towards like how yes now you're doing this thing for this brand but like you know how are you you know what are what are you you know what's the narrative that you're conveying like it's yeah you can take a cool picture do a cool video action sequences and things like that but there's so much more to like even unpack like on a technical level of like how you put these films and these pieces of content together and like what's you know, you, you mentioned Morgan Cooper, but like, what are some of the other things that like has allowed you kind of like break from, you know, being the guy make with those cool transitions and action sequences to, to really, you know, telling these stories, uh, these brand stories. Um, it was, everyone was doing it right. The flashy stuff, the cool effects, the transitions. I just like, I was like, man, everyone is doing this. Um, and I was like, I'm not going to stand out if I go that same route. What I realized a lot of people weren't doing was storytelling, right? What you see people like Danny Gavertz doing or Cooper. Like these are things that I wasn't seeing too often. And uh, there's a Neil Patel. He's a really well-known social media guru. If you look him up, he's got super great, just like from an analytical perspective, data statistics on how algorithms work, what to focus on if you want to scale your business. Um, and he talks about how the one consistent component to marketing that has never changed is storytelling. No matter how much the industry changes, that is the centerpiece of marketing that always stays consistent. At some point or another, you cannot avoid that. It's like a, it's a massive slice to the entire pie, right? So, so many people spend time, it's, it, brands do this all the time, they fall short because of it. Brands will be like, this is what the trend is, so we need to create a bunch of this. Well, the issue is, you're still doing what everyone else is doing. You're not looking different. So when you are in an industry where there's a thousand other brands and a thousand brands are doing what's trendy, you're not creating any lasting impressions. So those cool flashy videos, 
what I realized it did for me was nothing <laughs> not to be like a dick about it, but it was like, it's, it looked cool in the moment, but I forgot about it tomorrow. I wasn't leaving an impression on someone's heart. And so with storytelling, I'm speaking to the emotion. I want, I want to pull something from that, right? The, 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 the product that's being pushed should be secondary to the vision of what the brand is trying to implement. If the product is your main focus, if that's your whole call to action, if that's the whole thing, you're not going to separate yourself, right? First form, I'll use them again as an example. Look at the community that they've developed. If you look up first form, they have, they, they reach the emotions of the community so much that people forget that they sell supplements. They're a supplement brand, right? but you forget that there's a products being sold there because you're so involved in, in the spirit of the brand and what they're trying to convey. They care more about transformation and change than they do buying the supplement. The supplement just comes secondary because of people's desire to be involved in something so great. So with storytelling, it was like I wanted to be in a position where the content that I'm making, it isn't just cool per se. It's I want you to get connected to it. I want to pull something for and inspire you ultimately to inspire you to feel like this is going to, even if it's small or big, it's going to inspire you at some point to make a change in your personal life. Um, because that's what it does for me. When I watch these, these videos that these creatives put out, I'm like, man, like that, that shook me. Like I was like, so I, I watched a movie in three minutes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I'm trying to convey every single time I film something. And if I don't, bro, I'll kick myself in the butt. I'm like, I didn't do it, you know, and I'll try, I'll do something else because that's, that's the ultimate goal. If I'm not getting to that point, I just feel like I wasted time. Like I'm not into the flashy stuff because it doesn't pull emotion for me. It's just like very, it's like candy, right? It's, it's a very instant gratification right. thing. And then you just feel like crap after. Yeah. You know that's, I mean? a, that's a good analogy for that. Like, and, and it, as well too, because like, that's another way that you're able to kind of stand out from what everybody else is doing. Right. You know, and like, so I guess with that being said, you know, is there anything that you, like, I, I feel like we talked a little bit about everything, but is there anything that any other points, that, dis discussion points that you think would, you would like to talk about that I feel like, that you feel like kind of dear and close to, to you, then you feel like you kind of want to get out there to the world? Uh, to be honest, it would just be, um, don't, don't get stuck in a rut. So in other words, pe creatives that want to, make this a full-time thing, like go for it. I have a handful of friends that ask me regularly, like, yeah, like I would love to do what you're doing, but like I can't because I don't have the time or I work a nine to five. I just wish that I, you know, I just wish I had the time to do this as like my full-time gig. Well, like not to be blunt, but like that wasn't the route that I took. Like I didn't take that luxury. Like I, I wanted this, so I got rid of all the weight to make that the thing with no backup plan. You hear you, the most successful people say it all the time. Don't give yourself a plan B because you're always going to, you're always going to end up there. I didn't have a plan B. I had a plan A and I took a leap of faith and it wasn't like I landed on the top of the mountain, right? I had to crawl out of a valley, but that was the only plan. That was the only option I had because nothing else was viable. Nothing else would make sense. So if a gem that I would tell someone to really absorb just to simplify it is like, find out your why, find out your priorities and make this your plan A and you need to eliminate the rest of your plans because that those contingency plans are holding you back in the first place. Yeah, 100%. Like, I don't think there's a better way to close this episode. So I guess with that being said, Christian, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure finally being able to meet you. I myself took a lot away from this conversation and like I feel many others will as well. Um, so with that, can you plug in your socials? Where can people find you? Where they can reach out? You know, plug that in. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my Instagram is Flores Media, Flores with a Z, so F-L-O-R-E-Z Media. Um, website, same thing, floresmedia.com. Um, you can look up Flores Media on YouTube, too. That's kind of where I put, like, my full-length stuff because social media has all the cropping and compressing and stuff, so I put all my full, all my 4K videos up there. Um, and that's about it. And then, you, you know, you can slide in my DMs. I'll, if I If it pops up, I'll respond to it 99.9% .9 of the time. Most people can have it, can, can, can attest to that. Um, so, yeah. Awesome, Thanks for having man. me. Man. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So with that being said, here's another episode of the Creative Block Podcast. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.